Okay. Well, folks, we've yeah. just gone live. Uh, I'm Gary. This is my wife, Gloria. Hello. And we're Grace Faith Christian Discipleship. And on screen with us, we've got Vic and Carmen Saunders. Um, say hello to everybody, Vic and Carmen. Hi, Hi. how y'all doing? <laughs> Good to meet everyone. Thank you so much, Gary and Gloria, for inviting Thank us. Thank you. Uh, this, You're welcome. This morning, we're having uh, a discussion, and it's actually going to be a spotlight on marriage. Mm. And uh, basically, <laughs> uh, Gary and Gloria are hosting this show, but this is going to be the Vic and Carmen show, you might say. And uh, so <laughs> I'm going to this hand over to... Um, Do you want to tell everybody where we are at? Where we're at? Yeah, where we live. Well, we live in Riverview, which is a suburb of Ipswich in Queensland, Australia. And right now it's, uh, well, we had a break in the rain, but we've had days and days of rain. And um, yeah, uh, it's, it, it's a lot been, of rain. been very wet. And mm. the areas north of the city here, um, mm. subject to flooding, it's mm. not, not as bad as it was a few months ago. But um, so in over here where we are at the moment, it is autumn or your fall, you would call it. So we're almost at the end of um, of of autumn or fall and what month of the year are we in may <laughs> <laughs> yes and uh so it's it's um southern hemisphere it's, it's unusual to get this amount of rain at this time of year it's, in this part it, yeah. of the country and and the area that the suburb that we live in is called river view river view one word and normally you can't see the river but over the last few days, there's this little gully down the bottom down here where little the creek. little creek where the drain stormwater drain flows and it was gushing. So we had a river view the other night. Oh, <laughs> Blood free, so there's no problems with that. And Gloria said this uh, session today would probably only be 30 minutes or already <laughs> i don't think so gloria okay. i think the subject and, of marriage is a lot to a lot to cover yeah and, and, and we'll be answering I, I just want to speak to the people out there in the third dimension and when i say third dimension what's this third dimension well it's you guys mm. because it's you making comments on your smart device asking this question that bring that third dimension to this uh, spotlight on marriage in this um in this uh, discussion this morning, we're, we're going to be answering questions like, why get married? Mm. What's the purpose of marriage? What's the basis for a good marriage? Is there a Mr. Right or a Miss Right? Is there somebody who's just, you know, what, what, what are you saying? Soulmate. Is there only one person? Is there for only you? one person for you? That, great questions, aren't mm. they? Well, if there's only one person for you, and you pick the wrong one, then the whole domino effect, you just think about it. Everybody's got the wrong one because you picked the wrong one. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, how should I choose the right person? And, you know, we're going to um, hand over to Vic and Carmen to um, come to us and give us insight, not only into these questions, but into um, the topic or the subject of marriage. Over to you, mm. Vic and Carmen, please. Mm. Well, uh, you know, uh, we were talking earlier before uh, going live stream about uh, how some people are celebrating their uh, 50th year. That's a, an achievement in today's standards by any means. My wife and I, uh, a little over 36 years ago, got married, uh, December the 21st in 1985, after I came out of the, the service. And, uh, and then, you know, the question rises, were we uh, uh, thinking about our future together forever? I don't think so. I mean, my wife did, you know, because she looked at it in a different way. And I was over here saying, okay, you know, a kind of thing, because I had failed previously in a marriage and a couple of marriages. And so I kind of like looked at it like, okay, when am I going to fail? And that's a question that haunted me for a while. And did I marry her because of what she can give me or what I can give her? I had nothing to give her. The only thing I had to give her was, you know, uh, you know my life and so on, what I considered life. But really what it boiled down to was that we were both 
pretty much struggling in life and especially without Christ. And so um, we met each other not knowing that we were going to get married, didn't even know we were going to, you know, date and so on. It's just that this lady at my job, when I first got out of service, she was working at the company I was working at prior to going into service. So I returned back to the same company and I'm standing there reading a bulletin board with a cup of coffee in my hand. And then all of a sudden it was like a month after I was there and she looked at me and she sized me up like this and she went, Mm, mm, mm. where have you been you know and, and I looked at her and I went uh are you talking to me you know uh beg your pardon and I said oh this is a crazy Puerto Rican and she said you're a funny Puerto Rican because you don't even sound like one and I said I ain't Puerto Rican you know <laughs> so that was the first encounter with my dear wife here and uh, but I loved her craziness. And, uh, you know, and, and so with that said, we enjoyed each other, but it was always uh, in situation where, you know, we go out party or drink and stuff like that. And, you know, have a good laugh, because in those days we did not uh, have telephones, <laughs> as you know, or computers. So we the thing we did in, the, in Chicago was where we were born and raised was uh, sitting on the steps in the front, drinking a glass of wine and, you know, smoking a cigar or a cigarette rather and, and, uh, and partying. And that's all we knew. And then, but then when we got to a point where we were serious about it, we started really thinking about it. We said, Hey, let's get married. We didn't think about asking ourselves questions. You know, why or do we want to get married? A lot of people are never asked those questions. They say, oh, I love you, you know, and it's like as if she's apple pie or something. Oh, I love apple pie or I love this car or I love, you know, whatever. But, you know, we didn't understand love. Uh, well, I didn't uh, in, in an agape love, which is an unconditional love. I only love because if the person loved me kind of thing, you know, and or uh, whatever, and I had a really bad uh, understanding about love because I wasn't loved as a kid. In some ways I could see some love, but I was, saw a lot of hatred. I saw a lot of bitterness and unforgiveness and violence and brutality and so on as a child. So I didn't understand love. And so how could I get love or give love if I didn't get it? I, like I said, I got some fragments of it but uh, I held I hold on to that now more than anything because I don't think of that anymore in regards of my life now because of the love that's in me now the love of Christ and so with that said I understand now why a lot of people are out there married and they don't know how to love each other because they never knew about love or hurting people hurt people so they come together with this like weight and baggage like my wife did you can explain maybe a little about what you came from. Yes, I, I came from a childhood that I didn't know, I didn't see people who didn't understand they were married. I, I was not, I, I didn't have no kind of role model, no example. And my first marriage, I had a good husband, but I, it was a arranged marriage between my mother and, and, and my husband's family. And I was, too young, I was underage, and she had to sign some papers. So, but I did say, I did tell him, I said, you know, I don't love you, of course, you know, I'm a child. But I didn't know at that time, I didn't have that mindset, I'm a child. So I went into that marriage, and I think it lasted like maybe 12 or 13 years, and I couldn't take it anymore because I didn't have a childhood. I didn't have, I wasn't able to enjoy go out and have friends and, or anything like that. So I was into this marriage that I really did not, never fell in love. And especially if you don't have God in you, if, if you don't have, if you don't know that you're loved by God, it's going to be very hard. So we got a divorce and, and I was divorced for years and years and years, had the opportunity to marry other people because I was asked before. But I said, no, no. I said, I'm never going to get married. And I had a T-shirt especially made that it said marriage is the pits. And I was proud to wear it. So that's why he says that I'm a I was crazy Puerto Rican. But anyway, I would walk around with that T-shirt, marriage is the pit. 
you know, and uh, so I went years and years and years. And then when I first saw him, I says, wow, I mean, we both were good looking. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we started talking and then dating and we were not Christian. So we started living together and, um, and the landlord where I used to live, he was a Christian, but I didn't know he was a Christian and he would invite us to go to the church and all that. So we started talking about getting married. And I told him, I says, you know, I will only marry you if you are in your right mind, because he was an alcoholic and a drug addict. And I says, you know, when, when we get married, I want you to be in your right mind. I don't want you to be drunk and get up the next day. Who, what, you know, who are you or whatever. <laughs> so uh, the, the night before we uh, were supposed to get married the next day, I called a pastor because we were working together. He got drunk out of his mind. We were at a, a company party. And uh, they told me, come and take him home. And I remember that, uh, you know, we walked to the car and, 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 and I told him, you know, you sit there and the driver's uh, and the passenger and I'm going to drive home. And I remember um, that he's trying to take over the wheel, the steering wheel. And, and I never talked to God and, and he's trying to take over. And I said, God, help me. When I said that, he fell asleep. And then uh, we got home. And he walked up the stairs and I called the pastor and I said, the wedding is off. I'm not gonna marry this guy. I said, cause he, he promised me that he will not get drunk. And I said, he's out of his mind. So the pastor told me, and I didn't even know he was a pastor. Cause to me, I came from the Catholic church and to me, all I knew was a priest. So the pastor told me, he says, Carmen, I don't know you and I do not know Victor. But I have in my heart that you two are supposed to be together. And then I told the pastor, the only reason why you're saying that is because you are a man and you taking his side. And I says, I'm not marrying him. So he says, you know what? I'm gonna pray for you. And, and he says, and my, you know, he said, you can call me, you're gonna change your mind. I says, no, I'm not. I says, you don't know me, I don't change my mind. So we woke up during the night and he says, where am I? How did I get here? And I explained to him what happened at work. And he said, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. He said, I told him, I called a pastor, I called it off. And he says, you did? I says, yep. So we started talking he says, you know, will you forgive me, blah, blah. So we did, you know, I said, okay. So he called a pastor the next day the day that we were supposed to get married and he was nowhere to be found because he was supposed to be helping somebody move and and left a message to to, to let the pastor know that we changed our mind and that we decided to get married never heard from the pastor again but at, at the time that we told the pastor to come there was a knock at the door and it was the pastor and he married us in our apartment and uh, so you, uh, so what happened was I wasn't saved, and and then, um, okay, he came and married us in our apartment, and then everything went wrong. We were married, we were like three months in mar in the marriage, and we were already talking about divorce. So you do go ahead. And yeah, it was uh, it was crazy because I was drinking more heavily and and so on because like i said i had just she was divorced for like 12 years i had just gotten out of a divorce of a young lady i married in denmark and um and so uh, with that all said i i was just so angry at myself and you know and 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 and, and at life and and so i was really drinking heavily because we can go over here and make these so-called promises and say oh you know i won't do that again but you know if you don't have it here or if you don't have Christ in your life, it's like, you know, you're just speaking, you know, words uh, that just float away. And so then um, it was empty. And so I knew I was empty. There was a void in me, but I knew I, I loved the Lord at a very young age, but I turned my back on him because I, I because of the religion I was in. I was in the, in the denomination that was very legalistic. 
I didn't have my wife said she didn't have a childhood. I didn't get to enjoy my childhood either. That's why I went out there and went berserk with life, you know, so-called life, the party life. And so with that said, I had no restraints on my life. I was just a person just like running wild, like a wild stallion. And, when I, and you know, I, I re realized years later, I remember a pastor saying that we weren't taught to lead. We were taught to breed. And so that's all the understanding we had about life, thinking that that life was just a big party, you know, go out, be unfaithful here, do anything you want. Well, my wife and I came together like that. We both had this baggage. And then when what, what came to happen, what, what come to you know mind was that, you know, I had a bottle and I said, this is what I'm married to. And I remember that. And then, but in my heart, I said, I don't really mean that because there's something about this woman that she really actually cares for me. And so then, uh, make a long story short, we received Christ after this gentleman, her landlord kept talking to us about Jesus. And I used to tell him, Angelo, I don't want to hear about Jesus. Where was he at when my father be, well, you know, and all this mess, you know, where was God? And he said, he was always there. He still loves you. He loves you. You know, and then I think about first Peter it talks about that, that incorruptible seed abides in your spirit, producing his nature and his life. It was always deposited a seed in my heart because my wife would even tell people, I think Victor's a communist or something because he gets drunk or high and he talks about God. He talks about how he's a leader and, you know, this and, that. and I don't remember those conversations, but it was there. It was coming out of me. And uh, so anyway, because the word abides in you. And so, um, and I, the Lord knows I loved him. And I, cause I used to have these really bad or uh, angry conversations with him wherever I was at in the world. You know, I had God where, you know, and I cussed him out and all kinds of stuff, but he know he never left me or so took me. And so with that all said, we came together and we came to Christ three months later after, uh, you know, go, going through the, all this ordeal and my wife asked for peace. She said, I want peace in our marriage. And so she said, because I don't want to see if my marriage fail. I love this man. And so she told me that I love you. You know, can we have some peace? And so we went to church and the pastor preached on peace. And so my wife was a Catholic. She didn't understand about any, you know, Jesus Christ as, you know, him crucified. And she thought the lamb of God was an actual little lamb, you know, and uh, but, you know, now that we know he is the Lamb of God and, and the King of Kings and so on. And, and, and we know him in a real way. So we received Christ in 1986, the third Sunday of March, uh, March 16th at 1130 in the morning. And uh, and then from then on, was it a was it a cakewalk? No, by any means. The first five years was like, you know, bumpy, really bumpy because we were in religion. We were under so much condemnation and, and, you know, and, and legalism and so on. And we had no idea about who we were in Christ. And then when we come to know Christ in the nineties, when we started listening to the word of faith, we went to. Can uh, I say something? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to say that I was, we started listening on television oh, yeah. to preachers. And I remember uh, this preacher, Pastor Price, and he was teaching on the family. So he was saying, he was saying, ladies, you know, if you got problems in your marriage, he says, don't pick up the phone and don't be talking to your girlfriend. He says, pray that God will change you. Don't worry about your husband. He'll change him. And that's what I did. I started saying, Lord, change me. Because, see, I didn't know how to be a wife in the first place to my first husband. And I said, I love my husband. I said, I love Victor. I said, but. I uh, change me. See, I when I heard that pastor said to pray, change you, that's what I did. I obey. I took that word. And and then I did. And then what I did was, Jesus, you are in the center of our marriage. And that is my testimony to today. When people, you know, see us in the street, because we still hold hands, where we like to joke, we like to uh, uh, have fun. And marriage should be fun. He's my partner. He's my husband. He's my friend. We should have fun. We had fun before we got married. Why not have fun now? So that's what I tell people. I said, Jesus is in the son of our marriage. He's the glue that keeps this marriage together. And, you know, marriage is Jesus in the center. And how do you spell marriage? Grace. 
G-R-A-C-E. You got to give grace to each other because that's how God is with us. He loves us so much. We make so many mistakes and we will make them until Jesus comes because the only perfect one is him. But his grace and his mercy are renewed every morning. So when we got married, believe me, the first five years, we, we took an oath because we used to say the word divorce, divorce. The first thing out of my mouth, you know what? I'm through with this. We're going to divorce. We took a vow and we made a commitment that that word will never come out of our mouth and it had never had. We used to have arguments. I don't call them arguments anymore. We call them intense fellowship. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's wonderful. I mean, what I could say about my husband now is that I love him. He's my friend. And, and yes, we, we have sometimes intense fellowship, but you know what? That's what marriage is about. And I remember one pastor that he said this, and, and I have never forgot it to this day. He says, wife, quit telling your husband what to do. How is he going to hear from God if, 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 if your voice is the only voice he hears? And that, I says, wow. So he makes, he makes decisions. And if he makes a mistake, hey, that's okay. I make mistakes too. So I give him that grace. We give each other grace. But I want him to hear from God. He's a man of God. He's a child of God. He can hear from God. So I remember that pastor saying, quit telling your husband what to do. He got to hear God from himself. You know, one of the things that I think is the most important is, is coming to understand now that you're a believer, you know, that you have a position now in Christ Jesus. You are seated in heavenly places. And then, you know, the saying used to go with the little bands, you know, what would Jesus do? Well, you know, we kind of like take that as, you know, cliches out there that, you know, just, oh, what would he do? You know, but when you really think about what would he do? How would a person act if they really like as if Jesus was in the room with them? Well, guess what? He's in you. He lives right here. You just have to look down. He's right there. He lives right inside of us. And, you know, with that said, I, I, I had, the, you know, I, I, the drugs and alcohol, all that left me. The only thing I struggled with was cigarettes. And so I'd be at work saying, oh, you know, because I was under that religious thinking that, you know, oh, if C1C, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a Christian now. I'm, I'm not supposed to smoke. And, uh, and so then uh, I would go and hide in the bathroom and, you know, smoke. And I was working at the office at this time. And, uh, and people looked at me and then I come back and all, you know, you know, try to chew gum and all like that and uh, act like nothing. And then people looked at me probably and saying, you know, why is he hiding kind of thing, you know, and thinking that, uh, you know, I'm maybe hiding from them. But then when I got home after saying, oh, I'm not going to smoke, I'm not going to smoke and people can't see me because they think I'm not a Christian, then I would go home and then I go upstairs in the attic and I had this huge ashtray a 1970s ashtray, you know, and uh, had a bunch of cigarette butts in there, you know, and I said, oh, I'm looking around. Then I go over here and I, I, I fire one up. And then all of a sudden I look up and I says, I'm not fooling anyone but myself. I said, I am not fooling God. Cause he said that if, you know, if you're over here, he knows you're there. If you're in hell, he knows you there. And so who was I fooling? Just myself. And that's what religion did to me. It messed my mind all up. And that's why we appreciate you and Gloria so much. And along with Caris uh, Bible College, Ed Womack, Joseph Prince, name a few, who have changed our and in, in, in marked our lives forever in, in understanding who we are and knowing that we're no longer under sin and death. We're no longer under the law where it brings bondage on us and con condemnation. Well, guess what? That rubs off on the marriage because it it, it is about... Husbands love your wives. How? Like Christ loves the church. And I said, well, you know, that's kind of a catchy phrase there. I said, but when you really think about it, his love, he loves the body of Christ. How would he treat the body of Christ? Do, do, are we supposed to walk around saying we're being beaten by Jesus himself and abusing us and so on? 
I said, no, I got to love my wife. Do I miss it? Of course. Today I went over here. I really missed it. Uh, I went over there and I was in a, one of those victor moves. You know, I was just, uh, you know, because I had a, my, my mind all, and there's no excuse. But I said, wait a minute, what am I thinking about? Because your actions are what you're thinking. And I said, okay, what am I thinking about? And so I said, no, okay, I'm settling down. Got to settle down. I got, you know, whatever. And, and uh, but so wonderful about it. Jesus is not over here pointing a finger at you and say, oh, see, you blew it, Victor. And I remember it was a pastor that said, you know, don't look at your faults and judge yourself. Don't look at the mistake and judge yourself. Judge the mistake. Because if you go judge yourself like that, you're going over here then, and then condemning yourself and just say, you know, I learned something that very valuable. And so one of the things that we really, really come to understand is trust. Mm -hmm. We have to trust one another because that's what you find in failed marriages, that distrust and, and because of unfaithfulness and so on. And or thinking that, you know, things are greener on the other side, but all you have to do is just really water your side of the of the of the pasture, you know, and if it's not green. And so there's things that you have to understand that how important is this marriage? You can't just throw the vows around and like say till death do your part only if you do everything right. And so we've come to understand uh, ways to uh, uh, to help build ourselves up in not only in our in the, our faith, but also build ourselves up with each other, mm -hmm. you know, to, to talk out things, to communicate. And that's where, you know, I, I, I really find it hard when sometimes I'm sitting at a light in traffic and, and I see a, you know, I, I'm kind of like a people look, you know, I watch people and stuff and I look and I said, man, they're not even saying nothing to each other. <laughs> you know, they're just like, and that's it. They're not even talking. And I said, mama, when it gets to a point where we don't talk, I said, there's something wrong, girl. You know, I said, we got a party. We got to we got to move the table over here, put on some nice old music and just hold each other and do something. We ain't going to be like that. Well, that's what happened is because I, you know, that's what I love about him. He's he's a fun person and I love fun and he's always making me laugh. And, and we go to the restaurant. We shut the phone off. And, you know, we can see in case somebody called this an emergency, but just because some number or somebody wants to get, no, no, the phone is off, eye to eye communication. Yeah. And we laugh, we talk, we love to see nice, clean, funny movies. And we be laughing. And, and you know, even at home, you know, sometimes we watch a movie and I don't know if he realized it or not. We're holding hands watching movies. I realize it. You do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I'd be holding. So, yeah, see, he, and we're holding and just watching TV and and just having a good time. And that's what marriage is about. Yeah. And and you know, one thing that, that I my advice uh to to the women out there, to the ladies, is never put your husband down. Never, never do that. And especially in front of people. And even when you put your husband, I have called, I, I got nicknames for him. He's my champion. He's my champion. I even tell him, you know, when he dresses nice, I say, mm, you are good looking. Why not? He is. He's my husband. You know? And if if I know that he's good looking and I notice it. How many other ladies out there that don't have a husband that is looking for a husband? So no, just be, you know, don't put your husband down. Just always build him up. And, and, and you know, and the, some other lady will say, well, you know what? He doesn't build me up. Well, you know what? Somebody got to grow up and be an adult. Start building him up. He'll learn. He'll learn that. And that's what I do. To me, he is the most handsome man. And, once, and what I like to do is when I see like a model dress real nice, I like to look because I like to buy him clothes. And I used to do that all the time. He said, you know, don't, don't buy me so much. But if I see a nice looking shirt, if I see a guy has a nice looking shirt with a tie, I, I be looking for that for him I, because I want him. He looked good to me. Before we got married, why shouldn't he look good now? And, and I love to see him. And I tell him, he is handsome. 
Yeah, I got a good looking man. And I tell him that he is my champion. He's a gentleman. He holds, he opens doors for me. He doesn't allow me to carry any bags. He, when we go to the restaurant, he takes my coat off. He, you know, pull my share out. I says, my share? And I says, you know what? How many men do that? But, you know, I'm talking to the men. Be nice to your wife. You know, even if she's not, she'll learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and, uh, you know, be, and, and not, they have a wonderful book out there. I'm sure everyone's heard of five love languages and so on. And so you've got to know what, what, you know, what are the languages? And because we think, oh, you know, uh, honey, uh, you, you, you see your spouse, uh, you know, walking around with her mouth hanging down to her kneecap. And you're saying, well, what's wrong with you? Well, you never told me, you don't tell me I love you. I love you. Don't you know that? I pay the bills. I, I buy this. I do this. But sometimes, you know, love is, you know, touching, giving them a gift. My sister was that way. She, she loved her little gifts or like she loved me cooking for her. And uh, so I've learned. And I told my wife the other day, I said, you know, uh, because I was very loose. I had no idea about marriage I, I, because I didn't have that role model in my, my, my family in my growing up while I was growing up. And so I didn't know how to be a leader. I didn't know how to be a husband or a man. And, uh, and so, um, my wife, I, I, I told my wife, I says, because of the way I came into this marriage, I fell in love with you every day. I fall in love with you. Was it love at first sight? No, it was lust at mm -hmm. first sight. That's all we thought about. You know, it was lust. It was, I gotta admit, I was just lust. And now that we're past that stage, if you will, uh, not 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 past it. You know what I'm saying? Not that that be, is They're not pure. priority, if you will. That's all you have on your mind. You think about now what our future is. What of our purpose in life? And so we start setting goals in our life and say, where you know, where do you want us to go? We're always praying that, and that's what's so wonderful about having the Holy Spirit living in you because He helps you to pray. He helps guide you. He gives you things to, to come and shows you. And, uh, and, you have, and that's why I always pray the prayers of Ephesians 1, 16 through 23, or 14 through 20, and, and, and Ephesians 3, 4, uh, 16 through, or 14 through 20, uh, and one, uh, Ephesians 1, 16 through 23, and uh, Colossians 1, 9 through 11. I said that the eyes of my knowledge and understanding be enlightened to know the hope of your calling. So, you know, I put that in my spirit, and it becomes revelation. It becomes understanding, and then all of a sudden, bam, the light bulb goes off. Does that happen overnight? No, it, it happens with your time with the Lord. And so that's pretty much what we always understand. If it wasn't for Jesus, we would not be alive today. If it wasn't in the center of our marriage, we would be gone. Yep. Our, we would have gone our separate ways a long time ago yep. because of all the things we've been through. Can we jump in a moment there, Vic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. This is great. We oh, are, I'm we loving are, it. We are loving it. Yeah. But... I just want to speak to the people out there in the third dimension. Mm -hmm. You know, all this information about marriage, I'm just getting it now. And I'm 71 years of age. I needed, I needed this information when I was 17 years of age. You know, um, and like my kids are in their 40s, but my grandkids are in their teens. So somehow or other, I've got to get this information um, to the to the people who are growing up so that they make the right choices so that they don't have to go through the hard knocks of life that we went through. Um, you don't need to do that. You need to have God in your life and you need to have godly principles. As um, Carmen was saying things about um, I can't remember what the trigger was, but Gloria and I both wrote notes. And Gloria's note was, keep your God glasses on. Because <laughs> she says, to, you know, yeah. she'll describe me and I'll say. Um, it's it's looking past those things that might not be exactly as we'd like and look at that person with the eyes that God would look at that person with. No, so we just I'm, say, keep your God glasses on. I, I don't know whether you guys call pajamas PJs in America, but we call them PJs over here. Mm -hmm. And Gloria, Gloria 
went and bought me this P pair of PJs and they had written all over them, Mr. Perfect. <laughs> Whoa! And I said, I said, hey, keep your God glasses on. <laughs> and uh, it kind of stuck, you know, yeah. so that's, that's a little thing, yeah. that, thing that we say. Yeah. No, um, we're loving, we're loving what you're saying. Yeah, it's um, a real testimony. And, so, so Vic, you've got, yeah. You've got scriptures to back all this up. I know that you were um, that you were sharing with me that you had a, a presentation. Or um, do you want? No, to uh, it's just a brief. It's just a brief yeah. one. And, and what uh, what I do want to say before I go that way is that getting back to the trust and so on. There's another thing too. Never, my wife I think mentioned it. Never put your spouse down. Never. One thing that I realized, you know, I uh, did realize was that my wife's Puerto Rican and I'm a white boy. You know, OK, I mean, I'm half Chinese and German, but she's Puerto Rican and, I, and I'm white. And so we were kind of like always uh, had an analogy, like comparing ourselves to Lucille and, and Ricky Ricardo on I Love Lucy. So but my wife had the role of like Ricky, where she has the accent and I have the role of Lucy because I and I'm Amer uh, white, and so uh, I would be around people and I said, "Oh yeah, my wife, she's like Ricky," and you know she said, "What do you think?" And I said, "I don't know what you think," you know, like that, you know. In other words, what do you think? And 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 so uh, people would laugh and all like that. But then I looked at my wife and I knew that I shouldn't do that. After a while, I started realizing I don't want to use my wife as a laughing project. And so I don't ever do that again. And did she tell me anything about it? No, she never mentioned it. But see, because of my relationship with God, loving my wife as Christ the anointed loves the church, I said, no, I am not going to ever put my wife down. And it's the reason why I try to be an example, not only to people, but also to my wife. Do I blow it? Of course I do. But uh, one of the things that my wife came out with is the scripture that comes out. Let me share screen here. It's a very powerful verse that I said, Mama, you got to share this with people. And this is uh, coming out of Ecclesiastes 4 and 12. It says that the Bible tells us that though one uh, uh, is overpowered, let me see, let me move this here out of the way, that one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And it says that the cord of three strands represents God. I love it. The groom and the bride. Braiding these three strands symbolizes the joining of one man, one woman, and God in our marriage. So that's what we really started looking at. And when she came up with that, she said she woke up in the middle of the night, I believe. Yeah, the Lord was putting that scripture in my heart. And I didn't even know that that scripture said that all i all i heard was a chord a uh, 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 three chord and i kept hearing that i said well let me look it up and when i said oh wow and and then i told my husband can you please bring that out mm -hmm. and uh and then what well, too over here that i got over here on proverbs 31 12 it says uh and this is the proverb proverbs 31 12 and it says, she does him good all the days of her life. She will not, she will not hinder, she will not hinder him, but help him all her life. And I stand on that. We are together. We are one flesh. We, I am supposed to help my, I'm supposed to be, I'm a helpmate to him. And 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 I'm here for him. And I always have told him. You know, I build my house up with words of encouragement. If I don't do it, who else is going to do it? The world's not going to do it. The world's not. When he used to work and he used to come home and he was tired and he went through whatever they went at work. When he walked into the house, he's, I always tell people I got two kings, a heavenly king and an earthly king. And when he walked through those doors, he was out there in the world working, making a living. Why should he come home to a nasty house, a woman with a bad attitude, no respect for him, 
Are you kidding? When he walked through that door, he's my earthly king. I was there for him to build him out because he used to come beat up from the world from where he worked. And I appreciate, I thank God, the Lord gave me a man that I did not deserve. I did not deserve because of what I put my first husband through. I didn't deserve a good man, but the Lord, he is so good. He gave me a man that I did not deserve, a man that in the beginning was not like that. I wasn't like that. But like that pastor, he says, Carmen, I believe that God wants you to marry this man. There is something that God has for you both and you're supposed to be together. And you know why they have come to pass. I and mean, with that said, my wife, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, a witness to this for all these years that, like she said, I worked in a corporate world. I sometimes came home so tired, I dropped and uh, working in the steel companies and, you know, manufacturing and all, and several hours, you know, sometimes 12 hour days, seven days a week. And so, um, you know, I know some people even work more, you know, but, um, and then on top of that, we were going to school. And so I saw her maybe one hour a day, but you know, one thing that she always did, I can count on my hand the times that she didn't because maybe she wasn't feeling well was that she always saw me off to the door. She woke up extra early the time I would wake up in the morning, sometimes 2.30 in the morning, make me breakfast and lunch, get that together for me to walk out the door with. And then, then she went back to sleep. She didn't sleep in bed and say, okay, bye, honey, take care of yourself. She did that every day. And so there was times that, you know, I told her, she, you know, there's times I saw her for an hour, hour and a half a day. And so I said, that's why I'm making up with her now, if you will, the time that was spent away from her and stuff. And that's why we try to find every nick and cranny of fun, you know, or redeeming the time as it says in, in Ephesians. And, uh, and so, you know, with that said, I told her the other day, I said, you know, if it wasn't for you, you see, you know, you, getting back to what you mentioned earlier, when you first started uh, mentioning it, uh, introducing us, uh, Gary, was that, you know, uh, uh, is it love at first sight? And is this the right person? No, we had no idea what right and wrong was. We had no idea, you know, about is this the person that, that I've been looking for and all that. We're just so grateful that it just happened because God interacted with us and in and, and such a way that did he orchestrate it? Did he pull this together? No, I think it was because of her desire to know God. She deep inside she wanted to know about God because that's how she received her uh, when she got pregnant the first time in her other marriage because she believed in a miracle and then the time and then she got healed before we became before she came to the Lord she got healed of dozens of tumors miracle on the same day instantaneous I mean dozens of tumors and she was saying oh my god here I fell in love with a guy and now I won't be able to marry him and you know and we, because we're already, like I said, we're talking about marriage, but somehow God took this and just brought it together. Same thing that Paul, we never thought Paul, the apostle Paul would be the one preaching the gospel of grace. What all he did, you know, killing Christians, I mean, and Jews and everyone that, you know, he can lay his hands on. But look at what the Lord did. Can we explain that? I can't. But I thank God that he changed our lives. And so I told my wife the other day, I said, Mama, if it wasn't for you coming into my life, I said, you helped shape me. I wouldn't be alive today. You helped shape me. You helped mold me. You believed in what I did and, and, and believed in me. Even when I made mistakes, you never put me down. And so did she have to sometimes give me a kick in the butt? Yes, she did. I, 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 won't, take, I won't say no to that. But the thing is, she's, she loves me when she needs to. And then she also corrects me when I need to be corrected. And, and then uh, says a white person will receive correction. And so that's the power of marriage. And that's what I want to share screen with about the power of marriage. It says that here, uh, it says in Deuteronomy 8.18, it says, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it's he that gives you power to get wealth. Now, is this wealth? Necessary always prosperity. Yeah, that's one of the things that come with wealth, the power to have wealth. Wouldn't be, I would love to be rich. I would love to be rich. Why? Uh, financially, so I could be a blessing. 
I want to be a blessing. I don't want to go over here and say, you know, someone has, you know, say, for example, needs food or whatever and say, oh, can you bless me? I said, no, I ain't got nothing, you know, or don't give them nothing. You know, I mean, there's 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 wealth in, in finances, but there's also wealth in 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 wisdom, wealth in in in, in health, wealth in our marriage. How is, you know, and so that's what I consider or power to have wealthy relationship with each other. And so when I looked at that about power, power is, is, is in the Hebrew is koach. It's power, strength, might, human strength, strength of angels, power of God, and wealth is included. And so I'm over here saying, oh, I, I'm going to go past this. There's a, 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 a in, in, in the Hebrew word koach, there's uh, two letters that are involved in the in, in koach. There's uh, the word kala, you know, so I want to bring together what, what, how the power of wealth is involved when it comes to the bride and the groom. The bride, is, the Hebrew word is kala, and, 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 the, and the bridegroom is the word chatan. And, uh, and so when you take those two words, the first, let to, first letter of each of those words right here, you'll see uh, chatan. Uh, 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 the the Hebrew word for groom, and take the other letter for bride, uh, uh, kala. Together they spell the word koach. So there's power in marriage. There's power when you have God on your side. And so, with that said, when you have God in the center of your lives, guess what? Powerful things happen. And a pastor told us years ago when he was in a meeting, he prophesied to us. He said, "You are you a thousand would have, will put a thousand. You one will put a thousand to flight. Two will put ten thousand to flight." And so, with that all said, I was looking at uh, uh, that what that was meaning here, and make it brief. It talks about that as a couple, ultimately, or as a nation. Uh, when Moses was talking about that in Deuteronomy, it says, we will always reap what we sow. God wants us to realize that a nation or any two people, we're in agreement with God. We're in agreement to understand each other and understand what the ways of God is to be an example of what a real marriage is. You know, it's not just something to go over there and flaunt it around and say, oh, yeah, that's my husband. Yeah, he's lazy and all like that. We have good things to say about each other. And it says that if two will, it, pro, it says that uh, any two people will prosper if they lean on his wisdom and put their trust in his word to overcome any obstacle that may come their way. So that's the reason why we believe that what my wife was talking about, the three chord uh, uh, illustration there, and then how the pastor said that we are uh, to put 10,000 to flight. Well, guess what? We can't do this alone. I can't be over here one-sided thinking, thinking one way, and then she's the opposite and say, and then we're antagonistic to each other. We come together as one. Do we sometimes may not agree? No, this is when we sit down then and really talk things out. That's where communication comes in. Very important because a lot of times, husbands, this is the worst thing you can do. You can go over there and you start doing this. You start doing this and you, when she's trying to talk to you, you're doing one of these numbers. You know, reading the paper or doing something, not paying attention to what she has to say. It's very important to listen to what we have to say because, you know, you can't turn back the hands of time at all. You will never take back those magic moments. It'll, all, it'll be gone by the time you know it. And then years later, you're going to say, oh, I wish I had said this to her and say that to her when it's too late. That's why it says that in the old... Uh, churches talks about bring me my flowers while I yet live so you can smell them well it's the same thing with I want to tell my wife every day always remember to tell her I love you with the love of the Lord I love you so much you've been such a blessing to me and that's what life is all about when you have Christ in you the hope of glory you never fail will circumstances come of course they will but you have God on your side and, you know, to me, it's like I heard that uh, the, with the Christians, the divorce rate is even higher. Yeah. And, you know, to me, it's when, you know, to me, even Andrew talks about it, it's self-centered. 
It's all about, you hurt my feelings. You don't understand me. It's all about you, you, you're not giving me what I want. Yeah. That's self-center. And in the Christian, it shall not be that way. We are supposed to be like Christ and we are supposed to be submitted. I submit to my husband because I submit to the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he does something that I don't like and I don't understand, I take it to the Lord. I said, you said, I cast this care on you. I said, I cast your son on you. You created him, you know him, you deal with him. And I just keep my mouth shut and the Lord works it out. But you know, and meanwhile, I don't keep anything in my heart about my husband. I don't keep anger. I don't keep, you know, if we all make mistake, I make a mistake. I'm pretty sure I have kept him on his knee about me. Because like I said, Jesus is the only perfect one. But I thank God. I thank God for this opportunity. Gloria and Gary, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. And I hope whoever hears this, that are married, that are thinking about getting a divorce, take it to the Lord. Put mm-hmm. Jesus in the center. Mm-hmm. And remember that marriage is G-R-A-C-E, grace. Mm-hmm. And that chord that you were talking about, mm-hmm. Carmen, the Bible calls it a covenant. Yes. It's a yeah. covenant of marriage, yeah. but yes. it's a three-way covenant. It's yes. not just the husband and wife. It's the yes. husband and wife and God. And yes. God. Yep. And, yep. You, you know, like Christians who divorce need to take into consideration that they entered into a covenant with God, yeah, it's called a covenant of marriage. Yes, um, but it's a very serious business. Yes, uh, Jesus um, addressed the uh, the scribes and Pharisees, saying that Moses allowed divorce, but it was not this way from the beginning. That was not the intention. It was because of their hard heartedness that he allowed them to to divorce. And we Christians who are born again are not hard-hearted. We've got the nature of God on the inside of us. Yes. Thank you very much, um, mm. Carmen and Vic. And, yeah. um, you know, this, this whole topic of marriage came up because we could see in our Bible studies something special mm. that Carmen and Vic had mm. and uh, they the way they interact with us because... You know, we could give you um, just the word and uh, the word alone, um, which is the foundation for marriage. But it's this testimony that um, Carmen and Vic have brought that bring the word to to life. Mm. And Gloria and I are sitting here just... um, riveted to the screen just listening Mm. and enjoying um, the powerful ministry that these two people have brought to us all all of us um, in the initial stages and I'm talking a few weeks ago um, we got talking to Vic in um, just uh, to Vic and Carmen about marriage and uh, they flicked us on a video by Uh, Barry Bennett and um, I'm going to get Gloria to put the link to that Mm. video on marriage in the comment section below Mm. the description below this has already been set because this event was created a few days ago and I can't alter the description but we can add comments Mm -hmm. Um, now Barry Bennett made a few really pertinent um, um, points about you know, what do you look for? And Gloria's got notes there. Can you just read Barry's notes? Not the whole lot, but no, the, no. The, ones, mm-hmm. the ones that really got me, like, you know, oh, I'm going to marry her because I love her. That, that, can you find that one? You know, he, he gave a whole list of what the typical things are. Why did I marry this girl? Because of. And he points out that these are not the reasons to get married. You know? Yeah. And yeah, yet, things like, you know, this other person's going to make me complete. Um, wow. You know, 
when only God is the one that's going to make us complete, you know. Um, and, you know, people say, oh, we love each other. You know, well, what is love? You know, if you want to really know what love is, then look at the example that um, uh, Vic and Carmen have given us. And I will put those, uh, the link to the uh, the teaching by Barry Bennett in the, um, in the comments and uh, go and have a listen to it. It's, he, he goes into what is the purpose of marriage? You know, what, what, why, why get married at all? You know, there's obviously there's a natural purpose, but then there's also a heavenly purpose as well. And, um, you know, there's also, um, he had three, three purposes and there was another one, which was a spiritual purpose. Yeah, it covers spirit, soul and body. It covers spirit, soul and body, you know. Mm. So, um, yeah, go and have a listen to that. That's excellent. So mm. I've really, really enjoyed this. I'm sitting here just mm. absolutely blessed by mm. your testimony, Vic and Carmen, absolutely blessed mm. by it. And, um, you know, we want to give a shout out to people who have endured the years. My own parents saw 50 years of marriage before they passed away. I have an aunt and uncle, Auntie Mary and Uncle Larry, who are still living today, who have passed their 60 years of marriage. And so have my aunt and uncle, and your Ken and Eunice. Aunt, uncle Ken and Eunice. Uh, uh, Uncle Ken and Auntie Eunice, you know, we've got friends, um, David and Lindy Sweet, who will be coming up for 50 years of marriage. This year. This year, Heather and Brian, our friends over in Western Australia, coming up for 50 years of marriage. Have and, we got 15, uh, does that count? 15, we're on the way. <laughs> but, you know, like, it, it doesn't matter how many years you've had, you know, it's that putting that focus on Jesus first in our relationship. You know, um, you know, Vic and Carmen's testimony is is so powerful because they've learned through the hard knocks of yeah. having to work through stuff. But with yeah. someone who's only just got married or about to get married listens to this and realise put Jesus first, you you wouldn't have to go through those years of hard knocks. And we all go through them mm. if we don't have Jesus in our life mm. and put him first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible, uh, have we got time? No, I'm not going to go there. Look, I'm talking to you guys out there in the third dimension. Um, if you want, if you're in your teens, especially I'm speaking to teenagers, my grandchildren, if you, of which I've got 11, <laughs> um, so I'm speaking to a bunch of kids. Well, you're not kids. I, I look at, like, Ellie's just had her school formal. Her school formal. Um, she's still going to school and she's 17 years of age. She's not a kid. She's a young woman and a very, very pretty young woman. And, um, you know, I'm speaking to Ellie. I'm speaking to Chloe and to... Emily. Well, Emily and Lisa. And, and Lisa. And, and Luke. And, and Tom and Ben, he's got lots of those grandchildren. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I'm, I, I was singling out the ones that are in the, um, you know, who are no longer children, who are, mm -hmm. who are grown up, mm -hmm. who are young adults. Yes. And they need to hear this teaching by Barry Bennett on marriage. Mm -hmm. Because I tell you what, if I had heard it... Um, what, 50 years ago, um, it would have saved, well, actually it would have been, needed to be 55 years <laughs> ago because I got married when I was 21. And uh, it would have saved me a lot of pain and a lot of grief. Um, so as I'm sure it would, Carmen and Vic, if we had had that teaching in our teens. And so if you're hearing this, and maybe you're not in that age group then have a listen to it and see if you can share it with somebody who is in you know that young adult before they're married um so that they can learn these things and, and save them a lot of pain mm. and that'll be in a link in the comments below mm -hmm. um who's been watching Glenn? 
Oh, we've had a few people uh, watching from this site. Hi to Kathleen and Keith. They've been watching over there in Western Australia. That's lovely. And uh, and also we've had uh, Emerson's been watching. I'm not sure where Emerson's from. Okay. You might like to tell us, Emerson. Yeah. Just go mm. watching from mm. and give us the name of your mm. t your city and your mm. country because yeah. even though this is time to uh, – uh, it's not time for Europe. This is time for America and Australia. Um, you know, if you're an early bird, you might be up watching this uh, mm. video. So mm. maybe you're not in those two continents. Mm. So, okay. Well, um, Vic, would you like to just finish and close off with a prayer for uh, people who are, maybe who are at this point in time needing just that little bit of direction in their marriages um, and just pray a blessing over over the people who who are out there in the third dimension, uh, wondering whether they should get married or not, <laughs> and uh, and especially those people who maybe don't have Christ in them, that they will come to know the one um, who loves us the most. Mm. Yeah, so, Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to share our. Uh, uh, briefly our lives that accumulated after 36 years and we're still learning and so father we pray that someone that has heard this or listening to it in the future that lord god that it's inspired them or touched their hearts somewhere uh along the way and in, in, in regards to uh the road they're traveling and they have questions and if they have questions they need answers and so father we thank you for opening the eyes of their knowledge and understanding that they'll know exactly what your perfect will and plan is after hearing this and after uh this 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 uh meeting closes out that when they see uh, possibly again that they'll receive the link that mary bennett teaches they'll start really understanding more in details about how important covenant is how important marriage is and it's not just going to bed with each other it's not just about making money it's not about anything, Lord God, that is self-centered, as my wife said. But Lord God, marriage is very important because it, start, it starts with God in the middle of it. And if he's not in your middle of your life, I pray that you'll receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. As often as Gary brings out in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it talks about that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead and believe it in that in your heart, you shall be saved. And so, Lord, if this person or these people, this couple doesn't, they don't know you, that, Lord God, that they'll come to know you in a personal way and ask each other honest questions. Is this really something that we need to do right now? Are we maybe too young? Is there too much conflict between our family and, and so on? Those are questions they need to ask each other. Are they stable? Are they, are they trustworthy? Are, 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 are they, Lord God, not trying to to do it with all cheerier motives, but honestly ask each other honest questions. And, mm -hmm. and so, Father, it's very important. And, and like Gary said, we've known these truths years ago where our lives would have changed. But we thank you, Lord God, that our lives have changed. Yeah. And so we're, we're able to live this moment mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. and see um, how important God is and how important God is in the middle of our marriage, in the middle of this major decision. And so, Lord God, I thank you for giving them understanding and wisdom through perfect labors, through videos like this, Lord God, these type of teachings, Lord God, that they'll be able to run across and, and or even the pastor on a, in a church somewhere or, or a Lord, on a bus, they'll have someone to minister to them and, and uh, Lord God, to, to talk to them about and disciple them. And Lord, I thank you so much, Lord God, for Lord God, the awesome tools you've given us, the resources. And we thank you so much for Gary and Gloria, Lord God, opening up this channel for us. And so, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, blessings over them. That, Lord God, that the, the blessings, Lord God, are the king, priestly blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and lift up a countenance upon you and to show you his wonderful, awesome peace. That peace is our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I speak blessings upon blessings in their lives that they'll come to know Jesus in a personal way. And I thank you, Lord God, for success, prosperity, and, and Lord God, and, 
and, and Lord God, and, and abundance of grace upon their lives in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank Pick and you. come. And mm. you guys out there in the third dimension, if you've enjoyed this uh, mm. spotlight on marriage, um, then in the description, uh, if I can get you to click on the very first link, it says subscribe to our e-newsletter. If you'll do that, then that will mean that you you every Friday I send out an e-newsletter. You don't have to even read it, but all the links will be there. It's outside of social media, so you're not dependent on the mm -hmm. Facebook algor algorithms to receive notifications because they go out to a very full, very small percentage of our followers. So just click on that link in the description to the e-newsletter. And in next week's e-newsletter, next Friday, I will send out a link to Barry Bennett's mm -hmm. um, uh, teaching mm -hmm. so that if you can't find it um, mm -hmm. in the comments below, because we're yet to add that, mm -hmm. so we'll add that now. But in next Friday's e-newsletter, we'll send out, we'll include a link to Barry Bennett's teaching on marriage. And we've got two Bible studies this weekend. So click on the on have a look in the description below this um video and uh you'll see the links to the gfcd um bible study group the open group click there join that group and and you'll receive notifications when we go live stream with our bible studies this weekend god bless you and we'll see you this time next week bye everybody bye, bye Vic and thank you Vic and carmen that was wonderful bye. Thank you. Hi, everybody that's watching out there in the third dimension.